If you know what the state is now, then it tells you what the state is tomorrow, or 10 minutes, or 100 years from now. The trouble is it doesn't. Whatever the deep laws of physics are, they are, as they currently exist, computable. And I had an argument, I still think I believe it, a long time ago, which was when I went to a course, nothing to do with what I was actually doing on, on mathematical logic, and I learned about Gödel's theorem. And I was extraordinarily impressed by it, because what it said was, if you have a device which acts according to computable laws, then you have a statement which you may construct out of how the machine is made. And that statement is asserting its own falsity on the basis of these computable laws. And you can see that what it's doing, it can't be a computable decision, that's the idea. So I formed the view that conscious understanding, which is what enables you to understand why the Gödel's theorem is true, if you like, it depends on knowing not the rules which the, the system is based on, but knowing why they worked, which means understanding why they only give you truths. It's an amazing thing. You really have to see it to see why this works. But it tells you that your understanding transcends the following of the rules. So the question, what is Earth's understanding? Well, it's something that seems to involve consciousness. Because you can say, well, if an object understands something, it must at least be aware of it. So I'm trying to say that the quality of understanding is not computable. And therefore, it's something beyond what we understand in current physics. And the claim I'm making that it's what really goes on in the collapse of the wave function. Slavoj, yes, please. The question for Roger, uh, I respect and agree with your big argument that consciousness is not calculable. Your interpretation, uh, reference to Gödel's theorem, and so on, and so on. But again, nobody will probably like this solution, but you know what's my, no science behind this, philosophical intuition, is that, yes, it's non-calculable, but this doesn't necessarily mean that there must be some higher principle, some deeper mind which cannot be calculated. I am more and more convinced that the non-calculability, which involves a certain inconsistency, disparity, and so on, is the thing that maybe gives birth to consciousness. Consciousness is, for me, always rooted in something that I cannot but call a malfunctioning of a certain apparatus. You know, it's like another of my backstage maybe jokes, I think all new great things emerge from malfunctioning. For example, a French friend of mine gave me the best theory of French cuisine, that they were doing cheese and they were doing it carelessly and the cheese started to smell bad. And then they said, oh my God, why don't we learn it out of this, a more exquisite pro uh, uh, product and so on, bad smelling French cheese or champagne. Something went wrong with wine, with some fermentation, they said, okay, you see what I mean? When things go wrong, I don't think we need a higher dimension. I think that Einstein was here very clear, precisely along the lines outlined now by Roger. Uh, he said, and I don't agree with him here, that there is no science without religion. Religion in the sense of trust in some higher natural order that waits there to be discovered and so on and so on. No, my idea is precisely that if there is a lesson of quantum mechanics in all its versions, is that no, we have to we have to drop this. In this sense, Although quantum mechanics, and I hate those guys who do this, is often given some kind of a fake spiritual twist, like, you know, like uh, 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 all this instant communication uh, uh, between two particles prove that there is a higher spiritual connection outside time, space, and so on. 
I claim that no, quantum mechanics is the only radical materialist theory. As, as you already said, all of you, uh, observation is not, does not mean there is reality, we are somewhere out. The paradox of, of observation for, uh, advocated by quantum mechanics is that precisely we are in reality, we are a part of reality. We are not outside, which is why I will name now somebody whom I respect politically, but not philosophically. For me, the worst idealist is Lenin in his materialism and material criticism, where he talks about objective laws, all of reality. Yes, but where does he stand? From what position does he do this? I think quantum mechanics is deeply materialist because it includes us into reality. Observation yes. is a red herring, in my view. I mean, many people thought, well, maybe the thing which reduces the state, you see, you, if you just followed, let's say, following the Schrodinger equation, which tells you, if you know what the state is now, quantum state, and that's a well-defined thing, if you know what the state is now, then it tells you what the state is tomorrow, or 10 minutes, or 100 years from now. The trouble is it doesn't. And it doesn't follow the Schrodinger equation, because at some point, what's called the collapse of the wave function takes place. Now, people tend to think that's Ridiculous. I mean, what do they mean by the collapse of the wave function? So they tend to think it's the observer coming along and looking at it. And this is the fault, largely, of the terminology used, that it's sort of an observation. The big problem for me, I don't have an answer. What must go on already in quantum reality that pushes it towards collapse? To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.